Well, hi, Ben. Hey, Brian. Uh, I would do a Just Play with you right now, but uh, I'm too busy playing Terra Battle. Oh, me too. Yeah? Yeah. You're playing Terra Battle too? Yeah. Oh, my God. This game's pretty good. Well, I suppose now is as good a time as any to talk about Terra Battle. We might as well. Um, We're both playing it. Uh, so Terra Battle, for people that don't know, which we are actually playing right now, uh, is created by a guy named Hironobu Sakaguchi. Who's that guy? Yeah, I know. It's like totally fresh new talent. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be exciting to see uh, if uh, he does more stuff uh, in the industry, specifically with role-playing. I think this guy can make a darn good role-playing game. I think he's got a bright um, future. All right, cheekiness aside. So this guy uh, is now working for Miss Walker, but you know, made was, Nine was his send-off, right? I mean, he... He, was, he collaborated with Eleven. No, well, I mean he was involved in, with Ten. Okay. To some involved, but Nine was like his baby. Like yeah, like yeah. My, 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 <laughs> one of my favorite quotes from him is that he said Nine was his opinion of what the ultimate Final Fantasy game should be. I'm paraphrasing that. Turns but, out he's absolutely correct. Right. Nine is <laughs> yeah. the best Final but, Fantasy. Game. Let's just talk about Nine <laughs> for ten minutes. But anyway, um, so he makes this game. I checked this game out. I played it on an iPad in front of him, which was absolutely terrifying. Uh, while I went to PAX. Do you but, think he was judging you? Uh, oh, I'm sure he was judging me. Um, but uh, now I'm playing on my phone, and I don't know if... I really like it on the phone. I don't know if I'd actually like need to break out an iPad to play this. I actually kind of like the... Uh, one of my favorite things about this game is that you can be really serious about it. You can mm -hmm. take on like the, 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 the level that you're at the furthest, you know, and like actually try to beat that level. Or you can just go back, like, I'm playing it right now, and I'm barely paying attention, because I'm just playing an earlier part of the game. Yeah. <clears throat> but um, so for people uh, uh, that have not played this game, so you, you have a grid, and you have your little characters, and you move them about, and when they appear on opposite sides of an enemy, they'll attack that enemy. And when, what I really like that it's really hard to get good at is if any other character is like in line with one of those people that are attacking, they'll give them a bonus. Yep. So the trick if you're you know, dealing with enemies that do lots of damage is to like figure out where those healers are gonna go. Right. And what even is more mind bending is the fact that you can move other characters, when you, when you pick somebody and move them, you have three seconds to drop them where they're gonna be. Mm -hmm. And after three seconds, they just drop wherever, you, wherever you're putting them. And if they pass through another square, that square will move against the direction that they're moving. Yep. So of course, when Sakaguchi was showing it to me, he was like, oh, check this out. And he like, whoop, 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 like moved all these guys in just one move and like destroyed the entire screen. So you can, you can beat a match really quickly if you actually have dexterity with your finger, which you don't see that often with tactical uh, kind of turn base ish um, mobile games. Uh, so what, what what is your big take on on this game? What is your, what's your favorite thing about Terra Battle? Um, my favorite thing about Terra Battle is sort of the hidden depth within it because I think you the the way that the difficulty is presented, you can kind of play a lot of the game and not have to do all of the crazy stuff. Like you don't have to completely master all of the the weaknesses, like there's a rock, paper, scissors mechanic uh, where, you know, this type of weapon is better against this type of weapon and so on and so forth. And the thing that we were talking about where you can bump into guys and set up combos. So you're, it's kind of easy up front, but it's presented in such a way where you kind of do those things as you're going and you're learning like, oh, okay, I get it. If I do this, then I will be more successful than I am now. And so by the time you actually get to the challenging stuff, you actually feel ready for it. And uh, I think that's what all mobile games should be. I, I sort of get, the reason I'm not that into mobile games is I feel like a lot of them you play and within the first five minutes, you have all of the depth of the game. This, like this is as complicated right. as it's going to get. Uh, and that's what I like about Terra Battle is I feel as though every time I play it, I'm learning something. I'm getting a little bit better at that sense of progression. One thing that I found <laughs> that uh, I'm actually really into the art style. Yeah, me too. Uh, and I'm not, actually not a big fan of games like that, and I know Persona is one of these games, which is like your game of life, basically. It's like one of your Persona 4, it's like one of the best games I ever made. It's right? an excellent game, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm not a big fan of the Japanese like 2D art conversations in RPGs, mm -hmm. where like you never actually see these characters talk in game, it's just kind of like the background gets fuzzy and then these like, Two yeah. of these sprites come in that, like, you know, if you're lucky, might have like three or four different expressions. There's like surprised, angry. That's, that's a budget thing, mostly. Right. And, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I guess I never really equated that with budget. I always thought that was just maybe like a time saving thing or like, oh, that's just their way around, like, well, we can have way more dialogue in this. Uh, and it's not just like little bubbles that'll pop up. It's kind of like the solve moving out of like the 16 bit era into uh, the 3D era. 
But this is you know heavily sprite based. You know, it's like you have these little squares and you have a little picture of them. And yeah. then whenever attacks happen, like their little sprite pops up, and um, and uh, so you can see like who's attacking, who's doing what. I dig it in this game because to me it. Uh, this this game is very scalable. You know, it's like they could just keep adding more sprites and more characters, and it could just fit. You know, all they got to do is come up with the image for the background and some other characters, and boom, they have another level. Um, and scalability is actually a very interesting part of this game and how they advertised it. So when I went, uh, and the game's actually performed really well. I think it's gone. It, it blew past the one million download mark. I don't know where it's at now. Yeah. But when it was announced, uh, and we talked about, I already did it. Just played with Max on this uh, after packs. And uh, Max after PAX. And, uh, and they said it, 100,000 downloads. Um, and it came on, the game's free. So we were talking earlier, it's like, how are they making money on this? At 100,000 downloads, they'll you know, release new art or release a new tr uh, piece of music by Nobuo Uematsu. It's like, who doesn't want that? Like, where right. to sell? It's, it's hard to imagine Uematsu writing a piece of music and it not being released. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like they're holding on that piece of music. Um, so. It, it, it provides extra incentive if you're a fan of Mistwalker, if you're a fan of any of the artists that are involved with the project, to like maybe get the word out, you know, and, and, and have friends be like, hey, it's free, just download it, and then more stuff happens, you know, you get more content in this game. Have other games done that? I mean, that's kind of an interesting, it's kind of a no-brainer when you think about it, especially for a mobile game, for a free mobile game. Right. I mean, the, the closest analogy I can think of is Kickstarter with their certain like tiers with benchmarks, of rewards. Yeah. Uh, but nothing. I can't think of anything that's quite like this. But all the Kickstarter stuff is money. It's like right. no matter what, like there's no way to just like sign a petition for Kickstarter. Like you have to give them money. Yep. And in this, like you're not giving money to this. You're literally just downloading it. So yeah. The 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 thing is, like what you said, and we were talking about earlier. Um, Despite how many downloads it's gotten, I want to know how successful it is, like how much money it's made them, because right. you do not need to spend a single dime. It's one of the most generous free-to-play mobile games that I've played in quite some time. Uh, there are, there's a currency and an energy that you have, but they're so giving with right. that. You know, I've been playing for hours, and I, I haven't felt compelled or even like pushed to spend I think the money. first thing you're going to hit is the you can only play so many games, right? right? It's like five or six games at a time. It well it, de and then, like, it depends you get on one what of missions you're back. doing. Okay. Because if you're doing like this there's a slime zone and it's only open for a certain period of time. Uh, and you get a lot of experience, you level up you guys, you can take on harder things, but it takes a lot of energy to do that, and so you can't play as many games if you're doing the slime zone. Is that like the Hearthstone arena of Terra Battle? Um, slime zone? Sort of, sort of, yeah. But, so my biggest thing about free-to-play games, the one thing that drives me over the edge is when they're constantly in your face at the end of every match saying, hey, why don't you spend some money? And Terra Battle never, does that? Right. It just lets me play the game. Yeah. Um, and I, I, it's a simple thing, I guess, when you say it out loud. But it's something that I wish more people did because I spent a dollar ninety nine on Terra Battle because it's like, okay, I've been playing this for four. What hours. did you spend it on? What was the breaking point? Um, I did a bunch of the Slime Zone, and I wanted to do more Slime Zone. I'm all about the <laughs> Slime Zone, Brent. <laughs> I've never even heard of Slime Zone before. Yeah, or the the Metal Zone. And in whatever. Metal it's or called. Slime Zone. Metal uh, and Slime are two very very different concepts. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I think of Metal wait. Slimes from Dragon Quest, which it, it, I think it's kind of referencing. Which is interesting because there's not, like, are, are you, do you pick up any Dragon Quest or Final Fantasy references or Blue Dragon or anything? Like, is there any other references to stuff that they've done before? Not really, and I think that's one of the funny things about Terra Battle is because, you know, Hironobu Sakaguchi is associated with these grand epic RPGs. And when this, when you get presented a story in Terra Battle, it's this really generic fantasy text, and it's almost like why, why, why bother? This is adding nothing to the game, you know. Uh, not that it's a big deal, but I'm just curious what they felt the motivation was. It's interesting because when we <laughs> do just plays, uh, you know, I always try to, to, um, you know. I mean, I'm rarely the one who's played the game. Like, I play, like, GTA and Infinity, and you guys play everything else, basically. But uh, at the end of it, it's always like, okay, I've learned a little bit more about that game, and then we kind of leave it up to the, the user. If, if they're interested in that game, um, then, then maybe they can go check it out. Who shouldn't download this game? It's free. Right. Uh, the proceeds go to benefit one of the greatest RPG creators that's ever existed in video games. It's free. Yep. You know, and it's, uh, I mean, odds are almost everybody watching this video has some kind of uh, uh, smartphone, you know, from some you know, smartphone maker. It's on Android and iOS, right? It's on, it's on yeah. tablets. And I, 
It's a pretty easy sell. I it's think. an extremely easy sell. This, I think it's my favorite mobile game that I've played this year. It's Yeah, it's a very accessible mobile game. I actually am currently playing, Star Wars actually just came out with a bunch of great mobile games, so I'm currently oh, playing nice. those. And we don't talk about mobile games that much. We and, should talk about them more. And this game, cautiously. Yeah, and this game actually came up a lot, you know, when we were talking about Just Played, so yeah. we would like pick which ones we're gonna do, and it's like, well, we could always do Terra Battle. Yeah. And the day finally came, and we could I, chat about it. I think the the one last thing that I wanna say is I'm, I'm all about the, the distillation of JRPGs. I think one of the biggest things holding the genre back is it has to be this way. You have to have the three hour long intro where you don't do that much, and then it has to be 70 hours long. And this is not a JRPG, this is a puzzle game. Right. But I think it, it sort of nails all of the things that I like about JRPG combat where it's you have to think about who you're bringing into battle, right? You have to think about positioning. You have to think about uh, what's weak against th this versus the other thing. It has all of that stuff, and I'm you know I'm doing a game every 30 seconds, so it's, it has that immediacy right. that so many JRPGs don't have, um, and I think that's that's interesting. And I think other mobile games that take this sort of fantasy, sort of JRPG influenced approach could learn a lot from Terra Battle. And I think the big question now is how much content are we going to get in Terra Battle before we get Terra Battle 2? You know, before they're like, okay, let's, you know, we, uh, we, we broke 2 million. I think that's like their current goal. I don't know if they've announced anything past 2 million downloads. I think it's something that they could kind of ride for a while. I, sure. I, I don't see any reason for Terra Battle 2 because it's so easy to just add new stages, new characters. I thought it would be really cool if they had like uh, Lost Odyssey characters or uh, Last Story characters or Blue Dragon characters right. in there, you know, that'd be, that'd be fun or some event like that, so. I think we sold it. I think we sold it, I hope so. Terrible. It's really good. Check it out, everybody. Check it out. <laughs>